Hello, it's Jeanette with Geoamazing Paper Crafts. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today I have uh, another video for you, and this one is a little tea bag holder booklet, and it has a magnetic closure. It opens like a little diary book, and inside I have four little pockets in here to hold four tea bags. Isn't this cute? I love that little magnetic closure. Um, I'm using the Mosaic Mood Specialty Designer Series paper for this project. And I'm going to go ahead and, and do a, another uh, sheet of this beautiful Designer Series paper with a little bit different design. This time I'm going to be using the one with the roses. Isn't that gorgeous? I love this. It's got some uh, raised embossing on it shines really pretty. So let's get started. I'm going to be using, um, instead of this terracotta tile base, I'm going to be using some garden green base. And uh, for the outside cover, this piece of cardstock measures seven and a half inches by four and one quarter inches. And we're going to be using our scoreboard to score some score lines on here. Let's bring that out. <clears throat> Okay, so on the long side of this sheet of paper, or this sheet of cardstock, you're going to need to uh, just make two score lines, uh, one at the th three and one quarter, and the other one at the four and one quarter. And now, you're going to turn this this way, <clears throat> um, so that the short side is on top, and what you're going to need to do is score between the two score lines at one quarter of an inch. But how do you do that without making the score line all the way down? I'm going to show you how I do it. I just take my, my, my cardstock and make sure that it's butted up right against the edge there. And I will take my stylus and go one, two on the lumps. You'll feel them. One, two. And that is one quarter of an inch because this scoreboard is in one eighth inch increments so we're just going to score this down and so it's just going to make that little score line between the two dots and I'm going to flip it over because I find it easier to work on this side instead of trying to find it over here so I go one lump two lump and then in between okay and now I've got my two score lines in here and so why do I need those two score lines? Well, I don't want tape to go all the way to the to the very end because if you notice on this one here, do you see how do you see how if I were to put tape all the way to the end? So those two score lines are basically just a little guide for me and they will be covered up by this outside spline, okay? So, let's just go ahead and put our tape on here. I'm going to put this scoreboard away just temporarily. We're going to need to bring that back out. So let's bring in our silicone craft sheet. And I'm going to be using some tear and tape. And we're just going to put three strips uh, right in between those two score lines. So, I've got one strip there. Let me bring in my my little block here to help me rip that off. And then I've got another strip right along the edge on the other side of that score line. And I'm going to rip that off and one right in the center. Okay. And we're going to also, before we put this aside, we're going to take our detailed trio punch and we're going to just round the corners of this uh, outside cover. And we've got all corners rounded. Let's put throw that little bit away, and we'll bring the, We can uh, we can go ahead and and fold this now. I actually put the tape on the wrong side, but that's okay. For the pockets, I have some beautiful uh, designer series paper. These are the hummingbirds, okay? Even though I'm going to have the roses on the outside, it's still going to look really pretty. So, we are going to 
bring back in our scoreboard. And we're going to, let's figure out, I think I want the, um, the this side on the outside here. Um, take your um, your school, your uh, stylus and make sure you've got the big ball because this is kind of a, um, a delicate paper even though it's thicker it's a little delicate uh, you don't want to score too hard because you don't want to well, using the smaller ball will kind of make make it possible for the paper or the designer series paper to crack you know what I'm trying to say. Okay, now I've got it at two inches here, and this paper measures six by six, by the way. Okay, now I'm going to um, flip this over and turn this around, and I'm going to score this at three inches, but just down to that one score line right here. I don't think you can see that score line, but I'm just scoring it just down to that score line. And then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to continue that score line here. Okay, and the reason I, I did that is because I want it to fold in the same direction. See that? Where the valleys, you always want to fold on the valley. So, you want to just make sure that those two corners meet and then you can score. Okay, so I'm going to do that with the other one here. Now, to keep this from opening up, I'm going to put a little bit of tape. Let's let's move this scoreboard. <clears throat> I'm going to bring out my silicone craft sheet again. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put some tape in here on here. Well, we're going to put it right here and on this edge here. But what I'm going to do is um I don't really need the width, this quarter inch width of tape. It's going to be a little too wide for the tea bag, just a slight bit, bit too wide. So what I'm going to do is I'm only going to put half the tape on here. Okay, so some of that tape is going to be sticking out. Let me get my little wood block here. You see that? Some of the tape's going to be sticking out. And when I remove the backer paper of the tear and tape, I'm just going to fold that over. So, and, and if you have some 1 8 inch uh, tape, you can use this, you know, right here. Um, but my workaround for the tear and tape is just put it on halfway, and then when you take the backer paper off, you just fold it over. So I'm going to take my Take Your Pick tool, and I'm going to take the backer paper off. On both sides and now I'm going to fold that over on itself okay on both sides folding it over so now you've got double the glue <laughs> and now I'm going to and I'm not going to tape it just yet I'm going to fold it over and fold it this way make sure that my two corners match up here and then I fold. And it's not going to be perfectly even, don't worry. Because of the thickness of the paper, it's going to be impossible for it to be perfectly even on the sides. But you do want it to be even on the corner up here. Okay, so now I've got my two pockets and let's do the other one just like that. My pockets are made, okay. Um, one thing that I didn't do is, um, I, I, my uh, tear and tape stuck on here, but that's okay, it's not gonna show on the outside. I wanna go ahead and put the, the two pieces here on the, on the outside cover. So what I need to first do is round the corners, just on two sides. We're gonna put one right here and then we're going to put the other, let's see, yeah, we're going to round these corners here. On this side here. So let's do that. I'm just going to go ahead and just use some snail adhesive for this. 
<clears throat> I want to make sure that it is nice and even on all sides this way. Okay. And then we'll do the same on this side here. It's a little easier to put this these uh, cover pieces on before you put the box or the little booklet together. So, so make sure that we've got even on pretty pretty even on all sides. There we go. Okay. And so there is my little booklet with the cover sheet on. Now we're going to put something else on the on uh for a, a thicker slot spline here, but we're going to do that after we work on the inside spline. So for the spline on the inside, we are going to be using a piece of cardstock that measures three inches by four inches. It's going to fit right in here, but we're going to be uh, doing a little mountain valley scoring here. So let me get out my simply scored scoring tool again and we are going to be scoring this at the half inch mark at the one and a quarter I mean at the three quarter inch mark at the one inch mark and at the one and a quarter inch mark and then we're going to flip it around and do the same thing we're going to go half inch three quarters of an inch, one inch, and one and a quarter of an inch. And so in the middle of these uh, score lines, you're going to have a bigger gap. And that's because two tea bags have to uh, butt up against each other uh, in those little folders. So you need a little bit more room here. So let's put this scoreboard away and we are going to do some folding on here. Now I'm going to fold the first two, I'm going to fold like that, okay, on, on either side, one and two, okay. And now the next two, I need to fold the opposite way. Actually, just the next one, I need to fold the opposite way, because that is going to be our mountain fold, okay. And then we're going to fold it the other way. Okay, so when I when I've got all of my folds and all my mountains, <laughs> this is what you're going to have. All right. Can you see that? Okay. I'm hoping you can see that. Let me see if if I put this in front, would that be better? Okay. So, it's a half inch, a quarter inch, quarter inch, quarter inch, and then the middle. And that's the way it is on both sides here. So you've got two mountains. And you're going to be applying some tear and tape on either side of those mountain folds. So let's do that right now. Get our tear and tape out again. And on either side of the mountain folds close to the edge, we're going to apply some tear and tape. And don't worry that it goes over the edge on the top. It's okay um, because you're, it's, it's, it's okay that it's going to stick to itself once you take off this backer paper. All right. All right. Now that's one mountain done. Now let's do the other mountain right here. That's this one here. See? We're going to do this one here. On either side, apply some tear and tape because this is what is going to hold your little pockets that we made earlier. Now, do the other side of that little mountain fold. Well, we're not going to attach it right yet, okay? We just want to have our tape prepared. Okay, do you see how that is? I've got tape on both sides of the mountains. Now, if you flip it over, you want to have tape on this one, uh, this half inch score line here. 
just from the edge to that half inch score line, you're going to need to put some more tear and tape. So I'm going to just start at the score line. And I'm going to put two rows, and I'm not going to worry that it it's uh, over the edge because I'll fold it down like I did that, um, like I did the pockets. Okay, and we're going to go on this side and do the same thing on that edge. Ooh, we got to make sure you do it close to the score line, okay? First, and then butt it up right next to it and do the next row of tape or the next line of tape okay I hope you stick with me because <laughs> this is really a cute project okay so now you've got tape on the outside and you've got tape on your mountains and now it's time to start putting this together so it's basically gonna fit in here but you have there's a there's a progression as to when you take your tear and tape off. So the first the first thing I'm going to do is take off one edge, just the one on this side here. So let's get our our take your pick tool and start removing the backer paper on the one edge. Okay, and now we're going to fold that tape over on itself. That overlapped or um, that one beyond the edge. I want to make sure that that is um, completely not coming over the edge. Okay, <laughs> now you're going to take your your cover. You're not going to remove these just yet, but what you need to do is you need to line this up right against the fold. This might be a little bit tricky for you, so just be patient and just make sure that you have it on the inside okay like even on the inside in here and once you fold it now you've got it attached okay it's a little bit high on this side so but I'm not going to worry too much about that okay because it's still going to fold okay now you can take these off Okay, no, 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 you can't. I'm sorry. Now we have to put in our little pockets. Okay, so but doing that, we're going to need to take off the backer paper of these uh, little mountain folds. Okay, let's see. I almost, I almost steered you wrong there. Okay, and now, let's see, figure out what's, what's the front side. Okay, this is this is my front right here, so I want to make sure that my pockets are in the right direction. And so now I'm going to put, I'm going to open the pocket, and I'm going to put the, the edge of the tape right there on that fold, and fold it down like that. And then we're folding this over, make sure that that tape is right in between, and now here is our pocket fold. Okay. Now we're going to do the same with the next pocket. Remove the back of paper. Okay. Now you've got your pockets in there. Okay. And now you can take this tape off here <laughs> because you're going to be um, doing the other side also at the same time as folding it down. I know it's going to be a little tricky, but if you're used to putting boxes together, you know sometimes it takes a little bit of finessing this paper to go in the right spot. And that's what I found with this um, with this little booklet. It's, it's so cute though. <laughs> I could not not show you. <laughs> <laughs> how to do this. Okay, now my, my tear and tape backer paper is not cooperating on this side. Come on. There we go. Ah, sometimes it gives me a hard time. Okay, so now we're going to make sure that this edge, this fold right here, 
butts up to that fold right there and we got to make sure that it's right in the center okay and we got that right matching up the score lines okay and this is just going to work itself out right here but if you want to you can take your bone folder and just kind of burnish down in between here to make sure that it's it's on straight okay and so there is your booklet okay I might have to do a little bit of uh, work on the inside to get it to uh, uh, to stay straight but pretty much that's it and you can go ahead and load your tea bags in there let's see I have all my tea bags let me let me pull out some tea bags here okay there we go nice green huh we'll stick the tea bag in there and we'll stick one in, like this in here and see they fit just perfectly in here in these little pockets okay and now it's time to put the outsides <coughs> excuse me the outside spine on there and for that I have a piece of cardstock that measures three inches by four and a quarter and we are going to go ahead and bring out our scoreboard again and let's score this at one inch and two inch that's it one inches and two inches okay and now we're going to just gently fold it like this and let's get the scoreboard out of the way for now we are going to bring it back in one more time and to to make this uh, on the outside uh, oops wait a minute this is a little too long I need to cut this down to one quarter of it oh, at this is actually four and a half inches here so I need to cut down a quarter of an inch off of here I'll be right back okay <laughs> Sorry for the flub. All right, there. Now it's going to go like that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and use some liquid glue. I'm going to use some multi-purpose liquid glue to hold this down. I find that it's a lot easier because you do need the wiggle room that this glue gives you. I love this glue for some, re some things, but not everything. But this is one of the occasions that I'm going to be using this glue. Okay, got to make sure that there's enough glue on the corners and on the spline. Okay, I think I've got enough glue on there. And now I am going to just fit that in there, right? Make sure that the tops and the bottoms are even. Okay. And if there is any overlapping, you could just trim it off. I think we're good. Now, let's make this little um, magnetic closure here. And to do that, um, I'm going to need a piece of uh, designer series paper. I'm using the same uh, design right here. And this measures three and one quarter by one inch and now um i want to round the corners on here but i find that it's really hard to uh, position it on my detail trio punch so i'm just going to go ahead and use a half inch uh, corner rounder and i want to round all four of these corners if you've got a your old um half inch corner rounder that uh, Stampin' Up! used to sell or something in your stash a tool that oh look at that we'll put that on the outside it's not quite rounded that'll be fine well you we'll put that on the bottom side <laughs> I'm gonna take my paper snips and just here we go fixed all fixed <laughs> All right, so what we need to do is we need to score this at one inch and two inch. And this is the last time I'm bringing out this scoreboard. I 
promise. <laughs> okay. Um, just one inch and two inches. So this back part's going to have a little bit more room to grab onto the back. And this is the part that's going to fold over. Okay. It's going to go like that. So let's put this scoreboard away for the last time. Now before I attach this to the back, I want to find out where I want my magnet. So um, when, when this is closed, it's, it kind of sits about an inch high this way. So, it's, so it's the, the book's about an inch thick. So I want to go right in the middle like that. And I'm going to take my take your pick tool and I want my button to be right about here or or my um it's it's called the designer elements it's from here the designer elements I'm going to use um I think I'll just go ahead and use that brass one again I like the the look of brass and I want it right in the center here I kind of want to just poke a little marking there okay and so I have that marking on this side that little hole, I don't know if you could see it. And now I'm going to go ahead and put a magnet there. To do that, I need some mini glue dots. I'm going to take a mini glue dot and I'm going to take a tiny little quarter inch by sixteenth inch magnet. I got this from an Etsy seller and I couldn't, I can't tell you where, but there's a many, many vendors. Um, on Etsy, on Amazon, that sell these little neodymium magnets. Now I'm going to put that right here. I am going to go ahead and punch a little hole. Let me see. With my half inch hole punch, I'm just going to punch a little piece here. I'm going to put another glue dot on here. Glue dots. Okay. And the reason I'm doing this is because, um, well, on the other side, it will be because these magnets are so, so strong. And I do want to hide the magnet on the inside, okay? And so now I'm going to take another magnet. We've got another magnet here, and we're just going to go ahead and make sure that those polars match. And we're going to put another glue dot on here, like that. And we're going to punch another hole, uh, another little round, oh, wrong, <laughs> this is not, this does not punch holes. <laughs> this is the one that punches the holes here. We're going to just put another round piece of paper on here just to cover the magnet so we don't see the magnet, okay? Oh, first, but first... <laughs> We have to attach the magnet. <laughs> I did this wrong. Taking the magnet off, making sure that it's... I have to put the glue dot on here, not on the round circle yet. I got a little ahead of myself. We're putting the glue dot here first, and then we're making sure that we've got this right in the center here, and we are going to pick up our magnet, and we are going to... Um, then we can go ahead and glue this down. And I'm going to go ahead and use a little bit more Tombow Mono Adhesive Liquid Glue. Okay. And let's make sure that that fold goes right on the fold here. And hold that like that. Okay. There it is. All right, let's let that set just for a minute. And we'll peel this up. Up, oh, see how strong that is? And now we're going to go ahead and put our um our little circle to hide that magnet. So we'll put a glue dot here. And we're going to bring that circle in like that. And now there it goes. Okay, that's what I want to do. All right, now we're going to work on this little sentiment here, and that comes from the Memorable Mosaics um, stamp set, the Sending All Happy Wishes Your Way, and we're going to use some 
Garden Green ink and I've got that here on my block and I think we're going to use some very vanilla. Let's open this up and let's get this nice and inky. This is going to take a lot of ink because it's got a lot of spaces for your ink. And let's go ahead and stamp this down. I think I'll stamp it this way. And then we're going to be using our timeless label punch to punch this out. It's really dark, but um, if you know that most of uh, Stampin' Up's inks, they stamp dark and then they lighten up as they dry. And one thing about this uh, little uh, timeless label punch and this stamp, it's not an exact, so don't worry that your, you know, your punch is wrong. You're going to have just a little bit of a green border after you punch on your paper. I'm just trying to get it nice and even. Here we go. You see what I'm saying here? There's a little bit of green. So the stamp is just a little bit bigger than the punch, but don't worry. As long as you have it centered, it's going to look really pretty. So now I'm going to go ahead and put uh, put this on the, the front, but I'm going to be using some Stampin' Dimensional. Let's see if I have some dimensionals that are... Um, St I still have dimensionals on this one side, so I'm going to go ahead and use them. I'm going to use my paper snips, and we'll cut these off and use this like that. Okay. Yeah. I love it when I can use every every little bit of my dimensional. that off. Okay, and now let's put our our sentiment right there on the top. Try to get it nice and even on the top there. Now you could of course use any color you want for the sentiment. And now I'm going to just take one of these little brass um, elements, designer elements, they're, they've got the adhesive already on the back, and I'm going to put that right there. And now it looks like it has a button closure. Isn't that cute? Okay, and I'm done. <laughs> I am done ready to give this away <laughs> to a friend. So getting this gift as a get well gift or a friendship gift, someone's really going to appreciate that. So uh, if you need any of the tools and supplies that I used, in this video they will be listed in the description and also on my blog and if you need to order any of the supplies that I use please go to my website at www.geoamazingpapercrafts.stampinup.net I would be happy to be your demonstrator if you don't already have one so once again I am Jeanette with Geoamazing Papercrafts and you make it a great day bye bye